Well, hey guys, welcome back for a little more remote learning here. Uh, we're switching gears and we're entering our last little mini unit of the year. We're talking about fish from here on out. Some of my favorite stuff. Uh, I've always been a big fan of fish uh, and I find them just scientifically amazing. And we have quite a variety here in Maine and we're lucky to have such a wide variety of, uh, of game fish to chase around here in the state of Maine. So let's talk... Uh, uh, quickly about today we're going to talk just kind of introducing what what is a fish and what makes a fish a fish um, you know I always say my little son he's three he could look in a fish tank and say hey that's a fish so there's obviously uh, things in his brain that he's using to classify creatures as fish uh, and those characteristics would be that fish live and swim in water right they're aquatic creatures they're poikilothermic ectotherms most of them meaning they're cold-blooded and they use their environment to regulate their body temperature there are a couple of rare exceptions around the world um, they respire through their gills so that means they conduct gas exchange through their gills right they're swapping carbon dioxide for oxygen out of the water they use fins instead of limbs and uh, they're oviparous most meaning they lay eggs and uh, there are selected right so they lay tons and tons of eggs have almost no parental care in most cases and they're uh, relying totally on uh, instinct uh, for survival once they, they emerge, right? So fish are classified in a variety of ways. Uh, if we start at the very broadest, right, they're all members of the animal kingdom, just like you and I. They're members of that phylum chordata. They have a spinal cord. But we differ. We're, we're members of the class mammalia, remember. And fish belong to three different classes. There's agnathans. Those are jawless fish, which we'll look at in a minute. There's chondrichthys. Those are cartilaginous fish. Um, they're who don't who lack bones they have skeletons made of cartilage and then there's the most modern um widest variety of fish on earth osteichthys the bony fish right so typically if we just say the word fish and the one that pops into your mind is going to be a member of that class osteichthys the bony fish remember oste osteo means bone so that's an easy one to remember Let's jump in right right off the bat though and talk about our agnathans, the the jawless fish. Uh, a couple, the main members of this class would be lampreys and hagfish. They're the most primitive of all fish. They've been around since before the dinosaurs. They lack jaw bones or a true backbone, and they're parasitic scavengers. Right? They're 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 some crazy looking fish. If we look at um, uh, let's just look up a lamprey here, for example. And there's tons of videos and stuff online you can check out about these guys. But lampreys, um, there they are, uh, parasitizing a lake trout. Uh, but lampreys, they'll latch onto uh, a fish and kind of chew a hole through it and feed off of its bodily fluids and things like that. Pretty crazy life cycle. Um, if we go through here, I bet we can find pictures of lamprey scars on fish there you go so once they detach from a fish there's a big rainbow trout once they detach you can see that scar that they leave that'll often heal over and form kind of a perfectly round scar on on the fish that they've parasitized there's another example there so lampreys and hagfish super primitive um uh fish they they lack true jaws and they're just crazy you can see the little uh the little gill uh holes there that they have rather than gill slits that sharks or, or operculum that a bony fish has so just crazy looking creatures those uh agnathans right um if we go on to a little bit more primitive fish the next guys who showed up in that evolutionary timeline are chondrichthys these are cartilaginous fish sharks and rays and skates um, they don't have true bones, they have cartilaginous skeletons, and they lack a swim bladder like a modern fish has. But we're thinking of, you know, sharks, rays, and skates with our order chondrichthys. Uh, and then finally, our osteichthys, our modern fish, are things uh, like that yellow perch you see there. But any bony fish, the shiners that used to be in my tank in my room, and, um, you know, trout and salmon and bass, and things that we think of as fish in freshwater around here in Maine, they're all bony fish they're osteichthys they have true bones um, and 99% of fish species worldwide belong to that class osteichthys so just kind of an interesting very brief overview of the three different classes of fish that we have around the world um, 
And today, with our assignment, we're going to focus in on bony fish anatomy. We're going to think about these fins a little differently. The next fish you catch uh, this spring, you'll never look at the same way. You'll be thinking about its anatomy as you as you hold that thing in your hand and look at it. Uh, so your assignment today is posted to Google Classroom. This would be a good time to pause the video, get that assignment open in Notability, and then flip back and forth, and you can use what I'm about to do uh, to fill in your assignment. So I have the assignment sheet right here. Uh, you're going to fill this in with me today as your assignment and submit it. And pretty easy peasy. I'm going to do the thing with you right here. Uh, so I'm going to pause for a second, allow you to open the assignment up, and then we'll get going. Okay, pause over. Let's get going. And uh, we can fill in this anatomy here and talk about each of these parts of the fish and what they do and all that good stuff. So right off the bat, we'll start uh, here and we'll work our way clockwise around the fish. So this is an easy one. That's the nostril, right? And we know they're using that to as a olfactory sensory organ. Uh, fancy word for that is the nair, which is the, the opening for the, the nostril. Uh, that would be a real easy one that my, my little guys could get. That's the eye on the fish, right? For visual uh, sensory stuff. Now, this is a really good one. This guy here, every fisherman in class should know what that is. And it's an easy name to remember. That's the lateral line. And the lateral line on a fish is a sensory organ that senses vibration in the water. Basically, every fishing lure you've ever used is made to kind of uh, stimulate that lateral line and, and get that fish uh, interested in your lure, right? I think about things like spinners or the little spinny tail on a soft plastic grub or, you know, whatever fishing lure you're using, they almost all, crankbaits, they all create vibration in the water that allow fish to uh, find them and uh, eat them. So they use that lateral line to find prey, to sense where the other fish around them are, to swim in perfect schools. That lateral line is really, really helpful. Uh, one of the things I find amazing as a striper fisherman, I love to fish for stripers at night. And I use a soft plastic lure called a sluggo, a black one at night. And that thing makes almost no vibration, very, very subtle vibrations in the water. And you can cast that out into the loud crashing waves of the ocean. In the middle of the night, the pitch black and twitch that thing along and the striper can find it and eat it in complete darkness. They're doing that using their lateral line. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's work our way through these fins now though. Right here, right off the bat, we have a dorsal fin. In this case, it's a spiny dorsal fin. Uh, some fish have two. We may we may also call that the first dorsal fin. But uh, you may you may have found out the hard way as a little kid. You catch a sunfish or a yellow perch, uh, and you grab a hold of that thing, and you'll find out the hard way that that is spiny, and that thing hurts when they stick that up as a defense mechanism, right? So this fish has two dorsal fins. This is just a cartoon fish that includes all kinds of different uh, stuff on there, but. Uh, so right off the bat here, this this has got a spiny dorsal fin. Um, and uh, it's also got a soft dorsal fin. Uh, things like a largemouth or smallmouth bass are going to have both. We could call it first and second dorsal as well. Uh, it all depends on the terminology you want to use. But that fish there has two dorsal fins, one spiny, one soft. Um, side note, this little region here, uh, right before we get to the next fin, uh, is a really cool spot uh, called the caudal peduncle. I think peduncle is just about the coolest word ever. So I go out of my way to talk about the caudal peduncle whenever I can. If I'm out fishing, you know, if I had clients when I was guiding, we they'd reel in a fish and I'd be like, oh man, check out the caudal peduncle on that thing, right? I mean, it's, people just love the caudal peduncle. So gotta, we got to identify that. Now here, everybody wants to call this the fish's tail. That is not a tail. Fish don't have a tail. Fish have a caudal fin. And I catch myself calling it a tail from time to time as well, but the true terminology for that, we should call that the caudal fin. So there you go. Uh, we're working our way clockwise around here, and down here we've got our anal fin. It's always located directly behind the vent or the anus on the fish, which would be right there. Uh, there's your anal fin. Now over in here, our next one is our pectoral fin. I've had kids call that the Nemo fin before, right? Nemo had kind of one little weak pectoral fin. <laughs> and down in here, as we work our way around, these are our pelvic fins. There's always two of them, right? It should kind of maybe look like this if they were showing you both of them, that 3D kind of look. There's two pelvic fins. 
uh, is a pelvic fin there. Uh, and then this bony plate that protects the gills on a bony fish is called the operculum. And finally, the mouth, or there's some fancy names for it. We'll just call it the mouth. And the one that I want to put in here, though, our classic one, we've got a couple we need to add. Those little whiskers hanging down off that fish's chin right there. The fancy word for a whisker on a fish is a barbel. A barbel. Uh, we have a couple species in Maine that have barbels in freshwater. A cusk will have a single barbel under its... Uh, chin right there and then we also have our catfish in Maine our horn powder brown bullhead have barbels as well and then the other one that uh, we want to uh, label in here and maybe I can get rid of my coddle peduncle here for now the other one we're going to draw in because it's missing is right here a little round fin we're going to call that the adipose fin and you'll see this next class on things like trout and salmon, they're gonna have an adipose fin, this little meaty kind of bump of a fin just before their caudal fin, but behind their dorsal fin. So, you know, feel free to pause anywhere in here. Uh, I've just done your assignment with you today. Hopefully you've followed along and completed your bony fish anatomy assignment. Uh, go ahead.